What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, hit subscribe, join Ninja Nation, my Spencer Strider interview is out right now, and there'll be a lot more where that came from. So hit subscribe, and without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Aaron Ashby, who had these wicked change-ups and sliders. He had six strikeouts and three and two-thirds innings, started out with four Ks and two innings, his results were meh if you're talking about earned runs, but his stuff was filthy. I'm less discouraged about him giving up runs because over the long run, stuff plays. Paul Blackburn had these pretty curveballs. He had five strikeouts and six and a third scoreless innings. His ERA this year, 2.9. He was up against rookie George Kirby, who also pitched really well. Kirby had nine Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run thanks to his sliders and elevated fastballs. An impressive thing about Kirby is his command. He has 58 Ks this year versus 8 walks. That is excellent for a young pitcher. Nasty Nestor Cortez had these nasty cutters. He had 6 strikeouts in 6 innings. Yu Darvish may have given up 5 runs, but he also had 10 strikeouts on this filth. Look at that disgusting slider. And you might remember, Yu Darvish was my pick of the day yesterday to have 8 or more strikeouts at plus 310. So if you picked that, thank you. I mean, you Darvish. Dylan Cease had these mean knuckle curves and sliders and outdueled Logan Webb, who also had some nasty sliders himself. Kevin Gosman had these disgusting splitters, although this one was called a strike. I don't think it got the zone. Sometimes pitches are so filthy they move too much and fool the umpire too. Gosman had to leave this game after taking a line drive off his foot but x-rays were negative, so hopefully he won't miss much. Sonny Gray's two-seamers are always fun to watch, a lot of times by the hitters who take them for strikes. Both front door and back door, they start off the plate and look like a ball and end up a strike. Jordan Lyles had some filthy sliders. He had seven strikeouts in six and a third innings, giving up only one run. Matthew Liberator had this gorgeous curveball. Look at that. Jose Urquidy had 8 Ks in 6 innings, giving up only 2 hits and 1 run, thanks to elevated fastballs and his changeup. Garrett Cole had 6 strikeouts in 6 innings, thanks mostly to his curveballs and sliders, and here are a couple of overlays of his fastball and slider. He tunnels those pitches really well together, and it's one of many reasons Garrett Cole is elite. Speaking of elite, Shane McClanahan just may be snatching the crown of the best pitcher in baseball currently. He has 133 strikeouts this year, which leads all of baseball, and a 1.74 ERA. Yesterday, he had 10 strikeouts in 7 innings, giving up only one run, thanks a lot to his hellacious changeups. Opponents are only slugging 136 against this changeup with a 46% whiff rate. Insane. This overlay with his fastball shows you just how hard it is to time that changeup. And don't forget, you also have to deal with his curveball, his slider, and his fastball that touches 100. Pick your poison. Here's an overlay of his fastball and curveball, and that doesn't seem that easy to hit either. And in fact, it isn't, because opponents are only hitting 133 against his curveball. McClanahan has so many tools in his arsenal. Watching him pitch is so much fun. But my filthiest pitcher yesterday was Spencer Strider. He was just incinerating hitters all day, regularly hitting 100 miles an hour or higher. He also had a really good slider working. And here's an overlay of a fastball and slider. And you can see how that slider dives out of the plane of the fastball thanks to its gyro spin. Think of gyro spin like bullet spin or a football spin. If you like pitching, it's impossible not to love how Spencer Strider pitches. He pitches with a ton of flair, and yesterday had 11 strikeouts, gave up only one hit in six innings. And I'm saving the best for last because Strider hit 102.4 miles an hour on this fastball that was fouled off, and that was the fastest pitch thrown by a starting pitcher for a strike since 2008 when Major League Baseball started regularly tracking pitch velocity. A true record-setting performance by this rookie. And he's got to get Rookie of the Year consideration, right? I talked to Spencer Strider about the importance of velocity in pitching. I think by, by, by valuing velocity, you're also valuing some other things vicariously. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 
it's just I, I like it's crazy how hard guys are throwing now and how many guys are throwing hard, but it, it still doesn't change the fact that you have less time to react to the ball as a hitter. And so if you can give them less time, all of your pitches become better, every single one of them. And it's it's I wouldn't chase velocity at the expense of some other stuff, especially health, but um I don't, I don't think you necessarily have to anymore because we, I think we know so much about developing velocity, but yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't think you can't ever downplay that. I mean, people try to make the argument that, you know, I'd rather have command over velocity. And I'm like, I don't think you would. I don't think you would, you know, I mean, command without stuff is just batting practice. So that's, that's kind of how I think about it. Now onto my filthiest relievers, Tanner Houck had these wicked sliders. Lucas Litke had this sick curveball. Felix Bautista, who I really love to watch pitch, had this 101-mile-an-hour fastball and this 91-mile-an-hour splitter. Unfair. Michael King had this wiffle ball 96-mile-an-hour two-seamer with 22 inches of arm side run. Look at that. Bruce Star Gratterall had these 101-mile-an-hour two-seamers with 18 inches of run. And Jordan Hicks had this 103-mile-an-hour sinker with 18 inches of arm side run. That is crazy. He also had this slider, which got the KO. I can't imagine gearing up to hit a 103-mile-an-hour fastball and getting that slider. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. One of my favorite things about watching baseball is the fact that Clayton Kershaw always has a baseball in his hand in the dugout. Just a Hall of Fame pitcher and his tools. What is up, Ninja Nation? My pick of the day is for John Gray to have eight or more Ks today. And while that rhymes, that's not the reason I'm picking it. I'm picking it because I think it's a good play. That rhymes too. But here's the current line. Gray has been outstanding in five of his last six outings. And when he's on, he really can rack up a lot of Ks. So take a look at that. And also, let me know who your pick of the day would be.